The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger of, of, um, blogger of the Around the OAA, the host of Last Me Brain Cells, and the host of Between Two Minutes on Oriented Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the Look of Voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. A lot to talk about this week. Obviously, the big stories. We got some big ones um, over at North Farmington and also at Rochester Adams. We're going to talk about them. Um, also, we're going to talk about what's been going on in spring sports and why, you know, you got to really start paying attention to Rochester Adams, especially when you look at softball, um, looking at track and field. I think, you know, I mean, it's clear, it's clear as day. I think, you know, when you look at Rochester Adams and sports, I mean, it's clearly been like, you know, they've been so they've been one of the best teams all their this senior class especially has been very good. So and they're and they're causing havoc again, especially in baseball, softball, um, girls soccer and and track and field. So we're gonna break that those down. So let's talk about a big story here. Let's stay with Rochester. Let's go with North Farm first. Um Jeff Simpson. Um, leaves a legacy at North Farmington. Um, obviously, when you look at the Raiders, um, you know, you always think the negotiation tree, you always think of um, legacy, and Jeff Simpson definitely left that. Of course, 77 um, coaching season at Farmington Public Schools, both girls and boys basketball. Um, 29 years. Um, with the girls basketball program, nine is in a nine is the head coach at North Farmington. Um, you know that they developed um some really good players over there. Of course, um Jeff Simpson took over for Coach Tim Caradas. Um, so you know what do you say? I mean, he wrote a tweet here on Twitter. He said, after many uh, long hours of deliberation, I am resigning from my position as varsity girls head basketball coach at North Farmington. I spent twenty nine years. In this program, nine is the varsity coach. I've enjoyed my time with this program, but I feel like it's it is in my best interest to step down at this time. This spring, of course, he's an assistant coach in softball. Um, you know, um, it's is my seventy seventh year coaching season for Farmington Public Schools, both middle and high school. Um, I feel like it's time for somebody new to come in to lead the Raiders. Next year will be my final teaching year, and I'll be getting ready for my next set of adventures. Thank you to all my coaches I have worked with and coached against and all my former players. Thank you for giving me your time and energy always and forever. Go Raiders. That's what Simpson said in the tweet. Um, you know, a lot to describe. I mean, really, you know, you look at the history of North Farmington. Um, it, it's basically, you know, bottom line is, you know, he left his mark there. He left the legacy at North Farmington. And let's not forget, last season, of course, this team went 22-0. 14-0 in the white. Um, you know, they won their first league title in a while. I mean, 22-0, first time that's ever done that at North Farmington. I mean, obviously what helped them was they had a lot of senior experience. I mean, you look at players like Penelope Crary, Sal Leffler, um, you know, Liza Muller, um, Hannah Hart, Sijad, um, a lot of players have been there for a long time. I mean, you know, they've been there, grew with the program. Um, so really, when you look at North Farmington, the state of the Raiders, um, you know, Simpson always loved veteran heavy teams. I mean, it, it was clear. I mean, there were years he had some very young teams, but it was clear as day, you know what I mean, that he loved having veteran proven teams. And, you know, and you look at, of course, the results prove it. I mean, I mean, there were years he spent in the red. There were years he was in the white. I mean, you know, when you look at, you look at what North Farms has done, I mean, as a program, I mean, like, clearly, this has been a program that's been on, you know, been on the rise when Simpson's been there with, with the Raiders. I mean, clearly, you got to put Simpson up there 
and the upper echelon of North Farmington coaches. I mean, obviously, you look at, you know, you have the Negotian family coaching at, um, you know, you have the Negotian family. Of course, you have, um, you know, there, I mean, there's others. I mean, Ron Holland, obviously, of course, they have the football fields named after Ron Holland. Um, you know, then, of course, the Negotians. We talk Todd Negotian, then you have Tom Negotian. Um, you got to put Simpson up there. I mean, then you have Tim Carrada's coach goes basketball. So you got to put Jeff Simpson up there. I mean, for what he's done. I mean, obviously, you know, you look at, of course, now the postseason pass, you know, people are going to say, well, you know, how do you do in the postseason? Now, let's not forget, to his defense, he's had to play against Farm Hills Mercy a couple numerous times. Of course, Farm Hills Mercy and North Farmington are relatively close to each other. So, you know, when you look at, but the legacy of Simpson, you know, you got to remember, of course, what he's done with the team, what he's done with the program. Um, he's built, he's built proven players. I mean, like you look at, you look at a player like Sal Leffler is going to, um, I'm not sure the name right now in the thick tip of my head where she's going to college. Um, I know it's in New Jersey. Um, so I think it's Tipton, I think. I'm not sure what the name is, but, but, um. But either way, I mean, like, he knows how to develop players. He knows how to build players, proven players. You look at players like, um, you know, I mean, like, you know, you look at, obviously, with the North Farmington basketball program. Um, I mean, like, Jenna Back, I mean, Back Rouge, of course, really was, is one that stands out for me. Jenna Back Rouge, of course, um, she ended up playing in Oakland. Um, but she was a heck of a player. And I know she went through that, um, the um, North Farmington Girls Basketball Pipeline. Um, there were others as well, I mean, who went through that pipeline and had really great careers. I mean, really. And Simpson was a part of it, whether he was an assistant or coaching the varsity. So that kind of tells you a lot where, you know, he's been, you know, he's been around the game a while. I mean, like, he knows how to build winners. Now, some people don't like his antics, but... He knows how to get the best of girls. He knows how to get the best of them. I mean, you know, and, he, and you know, he's been a proven winner. His style, you know, he knows how to win games. I mean, you know, with this famous two-two-one full court trap. Um, the, I mean, like, you know, of course, he oh, he learned that from, of course, Coach Todd Negotian. Um, I mean, like, obviously, you know, when you run that two-two-one trap in a court like that. You know, you're going to get a lot, a lot of girls basketball teams see that. And you know what it's going to do for you. It's going to lead to success. And that's what North Farmington's done, especially from a defensive sta standpoint, is you run that 2 2 1 full court trap. You know, you're going to, I mean, not a lot of girls basketball programs see it. And look at what happened. I mean, you get the results that you get. And you clearly look at, okay, I mean, like, North Farmington's a team that, you know, they know how to produce results, and they know how to build proven winners. And Simpson, of course, was a proven winner. I mean, you look at, of course, the seasons that he's had. Obviously, people are going to talk about 22-0, and 0, you know, but look at what he's done prior to that. And he's built that program to where it's been. I mean, like, yes, Tim Carrada's did a really nice job with the program, but I think Simpson really elevated that program, you know, to go to higher levels. And you look at, of course, what he's done, you know, you know, he knows how to build winners. And, you know, obviously, you know, his style, you know, his style around the girls' basketball community, you know, you know, you knew... You, when you took on North Farmington, you knew it was going to be a tough matchup regardless because you knew how good, you know, and especially having to go down the, to North Farmington, um, that's not an easy trip. Um, you know, having to deal with a 2 2 one full court trap, um, having to deal with, you know, the aura of North Farmington basketball, of course, and the Goshens. I mean, it's not an easy environment if you're a road team having to go to North Farmington um, and play there. Um, I mean, like, you know, so, you know, but it is what it is. So, 
Grass coach Jeff Simpson on a um, great career, 29 years um, in the North Farmington program, nine as the head coach. Um, you will be missed, obviously. Um, you know, and you're going to be missed at North Farmington. So, you know, so now let's look at, of course, the future for the Raiders program. Um, you look at North Farmington as a program, and <laughs> there's going to be a lot of question marks for North Farmington going forward because of the fact that this team, you know, you look at what North Farmington had this year. The senior, they were a senior heavy team. I mean, you graduate, I think you graduate, I think seven, seven seniors. I mean, you lose the bulk of your scoring. You lose Stella Leffer, you lose Penelope Query, you lose Eliza Muller, you lose, um, there's a lot that they lost. They did return two juniors, I mean, in Hannah Hart and Asiya Jihad, but, you know, the question going to be is, what type of production are they going to give you next year? That's the big question for Simpson. Now, I think that's the big question for um, North Farms going forward. And then who's going to be the coach going forward? That's the other question. Because you look at program strength for North Farmington, one of the re I mean, like, you know, you look at, of course, program strength's not there. It really isn't. Um, you know, and I think that, I mean, you look at, of course, obviously just having a JV team, you know, and a varsity, you know, if you have, like, a freshman team, you know, you know, if you have three programs, you know what I mean? I think you're, if you have three programs, you're much more better in a stable situation than you are just having two. And when you look at a team like North Farmington, you know, we only have two programs. It's going to be very difficult. You know, I know the differences you can have when you play a lot of freshmen up on JV, but, you know, you got to deal with sophomores as well. I mean, like, who are also playing on JV and even some juniors. But when you look at program strength from that perspective, that is a big concern for North Farmington. And obviously that is, you know, when you look at what North Farmington has, you know, program strength-wise, it's not good when you look at it. So, whoever the new coach is coming in there, whether it's somebody within the program or if it's somebody outside the program, they're going to need to have a lot of patience because when you look at this program, they're going to be coming off a 22-0 and season, you know, and then you look at, of course, okay, I mean, like, this is going to be my program. How are we going to build this? Are we going to build it from the Negotian family tree? Or are we going to just completely scratch it and start over? You know, so there's a lot of question marks with this program, considering, you know, program strength wasn't very good um, to begin with with North Farmington. But now you have, a, you have probably a whole new system coming in, and... That's going to be another challenge there. Uh, they just released the divisions out for basketball. Um, I want to write a separate column on that and the divisions there, what my early thoughts are. Um, but when you look at the divisions um, where North Farmington's at, um, it's going to be a long year, I think, for North Farmington because you look at, of course, this team, who they lost. You know, they lost a lot of talent. They lost a lot of proven players. They lost a lot of, you know, they, I mean, they lost a lot. I mean, and you don't know the direction of the program where it's going to be. And that's going to be a challenge for North Farm to go forward. You don't know the direction. Where is it going to be at? Where is it going to be at? That is the big Big question for North Farms going forward, especially with North Farms and Athletic Department, you know, and finding their next coach. Who is it going to be? You know, is this person going to keep the negotiation principles intact, some of the Simpson principles intact, or are they going to change the whole thing up and start over from scratch? Because, because that's where, you know, if you have to start over from scratch, you're going to have maybe years of rebuilding. You're going to have maybe years if you're going to want to rebuild the program. I mean, like, when you look at the situation over at North Farmington, you know, 
you know, you got to look at, of course, what division do they fit right now? I mean, you know, this year, I mean, like last year, of course, they were in the white. I mean, do they, they, I don't know. I mean, that's the big question I have with North Farms is what is the makeup going to look like next winter? What is the makeup of this program? That's the big question I have with North Farmington is do they have, you know, are they going to be competitive? That is the big question because when you look at the talent level there for next year, it is bare. It is not there. Um, you know, so when you look at, of course, North Farmington next year, you know, there's a lot of questions. Just a lot of them. And can this team be at least competitive next year? That is the big, big question. And I think it depends whoever the coach is. But whoever gets that job over at North Farmington is going to need to have a lot of patience with this program. Because it's not like last year. It's not the North Farmington of years past. You got to have a lot of patience. A lot of it. I mean, maybe even more so. Because when you look at, of course, where the program's going to be at, you know, you're going to have to build your lower levels. You're going to have to build your upper levels. I mean, like, obviously, your varsity level. I mean, do you look at maybe with program strength? Do you look at, of course, you know, a complete rebuild of this program? Because that's what I'm seeing right now when I look at the early indications with North Farmington is this team, this program, is going to have to go through a complete, full-fledged rebuild. And I don't say that a lot about teams, about, about, about schools, but when I look at a course, when, you, when the coach leaves a program, you know, after spending almost 38 years, or 29 years, with the program, it's not going to be an easy replacement, you know, because now you're going to have to go through that standard and and you look at the talent level, it's just not there. So you're going to have to go through, I mean, it could take maybe at least maybe one, two, maybe three years for North Farmington, I think, to get back. But it depends who the right coach is. It depends on the coaches. I mean, like, if it, if they find the right fit, if they find the right coach, who knows? I mean, like, they could maybe, you know, turn around maybe in one or two years. Who knows? I mean, that's what it is when I look at North Farmington is you got to look at, of course, the, I mean, you got to look at the challenges ahead that lie ahead for this program, and there's a lot of them because this team, they need to, you know, they're going to they're gonna have a lot of challenges. I mean, program strength is a big concern. You got to look at, of course, you know, you got to look at, of course, who you got coming back. I mean, like, I mean, there's a lot that has to be addressed when you look at North Farmington um, going forward. And I think that's going to be the challenge for the new coach who comes in there, um, especially when you look at on the other side. I mean, like on the boys' side, you have a legendary family over there, the Negotian family. Um, so it's going to be a challenge for sure when you look at, of course, for the new coach, whoever goes in there to the North Farmington, I mean, it's going to be a challenge for sure. So we'll see what happens, um, with North Farmington, but you know, a lot has to, um, a lot has to go into this. I mean, like, obviously when you look at, of course, um, when you look at, of course, um, other programs who's made ch coaching changes this year, obviously Berkeley. Um, they immediately found their guy and, um, you know, I'm very curious to see how Berkeley does, but North Farmington, they have to go through with just a complete rebuild. And, you know, and I think that's where, you know, that's where the challenge lies for North Farmington going forward. Um, is when you're a team, when you're a program that just has to go through a complete rebuild, that's going to be very interesting to see how this goes. So a lot of challenges ahead for North Farmington. Um, just a lot ahead for this program. I mean, like, they've got a lot ahead of them. Um, you know, a lot of challenges ahead. So I'm curious to see what, what the direction, 
um, North Farmington's athletic director, um, goes with the coach. Um, curious to see if, um, you know, if they go inside with their, with their hire or if they go outside the box. I mean, like, we don't know. So, a lot to look at going forward there when you look at North Farmington um, going forward there. Okay, now let's go from North Farmington. Let's go to Rochester Adams. Um, when you look at, of course, the big news, this was a big, big shock to me. Um, Adams coach Jared Thomas stepped down. Um, of course, um, he was at Adams for four years. Um, he led Adams to a um, 59-37 record in his four years at Adams. Um, Thomas said this, um, on his post on Twitter, he said, Adams Highlanders, I have to thank you for an incredible four years and privilege for being your boys basketball coach. Together we were able to build a championship program and we did it our way. Character, hard work, tuning through the hard things and always putting the team first. Special thank you to my former and current players for your effort, dedication, commitment. I am so proud to have been your coach, and forever we are bonded by our relationship and time spent together. Also, I'd like to thank the administration and the leadership who believed in me and supported me every step of the way. Adams will hold a special place in my heart, and I will leave here full of gratitude and love for so many. Go Highlanders. That says a lot. When you look at the, the program that Thomas inherited when he took over for Brad Crichton, that program was a complete mess. It was a disaster. You had Gunnar Walters leave the program. Both Jake and Ethan Emerzian left, transferred to Troy. I remember those days. And those were dark days for Adams. They, those were really dark days. Jared Thomas wasn't even their first choice. When, I mean, Nick Ebola was their first choice. I mean, but... He ended up taking the job, but then left um, after a week, and then now he's coaching at Rochester. Um, but, you know, and then they went with Thomas. I mean, I think Adams made the right hire with Jared Thomas. They did. And you knew the first year was going to be rough. 7-14, um, um, putting everything together. Um, you know, and then the next three years, they took off. I mean, they really took off. And you look at the team that they're at right now. I mean, you look at, of course, you know, the last three years. You know, this team was 52. They're 52 and um, 52 and um, 23 sets in the three years that Thomas – you know what I mean? When Thomas, um, you know, ever since that seven to fourteen year, I mean, fifty two and twenty three, that says a lot. When you look at that program, um, you look at a player, you look at what they've done the last two years, district two district championships, their first regional championship in school history, and then they ran into a very good Grand Blank program at Lake Orion in the state quarterfinals, um. You look at what they've done. I mean, you look at the players they had. I mean, Gunnar Walters did come back to Adams and played one year for Thomas. But he had to earn his way back, you know, and that was very interesting, you know, with him. Um, I think this Adams team this year that he had was really good. You look at players like, you know, you have Peter Kardashian, William G. You had Brady Preschool. Um, all young kid, all young. Then of course you had um, Brodakawa. You had um, Drew Blackmire. I mean, you had proven. I mean, Nathan Kim. I thought Nathan Kim made I think one of the best plays of the year. What he did against Utica Eisenhower. I mean, what he did against them in the district final. He was the one that got the rebound. He was the one that got the rebound which set up the winning three by G to win it for Adams. He he set that one up. I mean, bottom line is, was it Lee or was it Kardashian? I mean, I got to figure it out. But but still, I mean, you look at, of course, what he's done with Rochester Adams. I mean, 
he had, he did everything that I thought he would. He built that program up. He built, he brought back the freshman program. He brought back, you know, he got the JV program better. He got the varsity program better. You notice that everything turned around real quick. And I give Thomas a lot of credit for that. He did a wonderful job with this program. He turned that program around. He got them ready for the red. And they're thriving in that division. He led them to two district titles. A regional title. First time in school history they've done that. And then to get the state quarterfinals. They got there. You notice the gold rush was there in full force against Grand Blank. They were there at Utica Eisenhower. Even though they had the disadvantage of having to be in the bleachers up top for the district final. It was going to be a challenge for sure. But bottom line is, when you look at what he's done for that program, he gave a hundred and 20% effort to that program. And look where Adams is at. One of the top teams in boys basketball. And that's a credit to what Coach Jared Thomas has done. I know he spent a couple years as an assistant at Avondale. But when you look at what Thomas has done at Adams, I mean, and you're never going to forget it. You're never going to forget it. I mean, what he's done with that program at Adams. You're never going to forget it. You're never going to forget the runs that he made. Um, the fact that they beat Clarkston for the for three times this year. That is unheard of for anybody to say that. That they led a team to beat Clarkston, a proven program, a perennial power in this state and beat him three times in one year. That is hard to do. Really hard to do. And that's a credit to what Thomas has done with the program. It is a credit. I mean, I can't say any more positive about Coach Jared Thomas. He's done wonderful. He's done a wonderful job with that program. He built that program with his image, his own image. A workaholic, worksman-like team, and the results showed. I know it didn't show in his first year, but, yeah, you could see some strides. I mean, they were getting better. Getting better each day. And the fact that, yeah, they were 7-14, but you could tell they were a much different team. A much more happier team, I thought. And then you look at, of course, the next year, they go on a tear. They have a nice year. Fortunately for them, they lost the Clarkson District Final. And then the next two years, they win a district title. And then both the years they win district titles. And then, of course, for Adams, winning that regional title. First time squish. That says a lot. He built that program. He built, he rebuilt that program. So now when you look at the future of Rochester Adams, um, I know a lot of people have been asking me about Paris Pereira's name. He was a, he's a JV coach at Rochester at Rochester Adams. Um, he um of course um I think that's been a very good name. I mean, of course, we know what he's done at Rochester as a player. Um, I think he would be a perfect candidate. He'd be a perfect choice if they were to go that route. I mean, I know Paris Pereira would be a heck of a heck of a choice if they go that route. I mean, I will be very curious to see where Adams goes when it comes to program strengths. Because what Thomas did at Adams, is clearly build program strength. 
that's where Adams got very good, is building within, building their lower levels. They did that, and their future is set for a long while. I mean, you look at their freshman team this year. They were very good. You look at their JV team this year under Pereira. They were very good. So there's a lot of optimism with Rochester Adams um, when it comes to building program strength. Um, if it were me personally, and if I looked at this job, I think if you go internal, it would make a lot of sense for Adams. I think, I think clearly, you know, you go in house, you know what I mean? You know, I think that would make, make a lot of sense because if you go in house, yeah, there's going to be a little bit of changes, but the identity, the mindset, it's not going to change if you go in house. But if you go outside the box, then that could be really interesting because you look at the division Adams is in. You look at a team like North Farmington. You look at Ferndale's in there. Clarkson's in there. Um, I mean, Oak Park's in there. I mean, you look at that those four teams and you say, oh boy, now we got to start work, wearing our um, worksman's like hats on. And then you still got to play, you know, you still got to play Stony Creek and Rochester, your two city rivals. Um you know, one of them you're going to get at the Crosstown. Um, and when you look at that one, um, when you look at Adam Adams, I mean, I think when you look at the city of Rochester, when it comes to boys basketball, I think Adams is the best one in boys basketball. Because, you know, of what, of what um, Thomas has done with the program. And I think, you know, you look at, of course, with what they got coming back, I mean, obviously, Adams does have a lot coming back. When you look at players like a Cardacious or a William G or a Trenton Lagarde, Chang Yang, um, Gavin Ferris, Luke Marcel, Jake Anderzak, Aaron Troxwell, and then there's the Brady pre-scoring question. People are going to say, well, why is the Brady pre-scoring question? Because you look at Brady pre-scoring, you know how good he is in basketball. You know how good of a player he is. The problem with, with pre-scoring is he might not be at Adams by next winter because, you know, he could graduate early because I know a lot of football schools are looking at Brady pre-scoring. You look at, of course, the players that are being looked at for football, you know, pre-scoring has gotten a lot of offers from D1 schools. And you might not have them. You know, so you better, if you're the new coach at Adams, you better prepare like you're not going to have pre-scoring. I mean, if pre-scoring decides to stay at Adams, you know, you know, for the next school year, you know, if, I mean, like um, for the um, for the next winter, you know, you're going to have them. And Adams, I think right now is, is a lot higher than they are right now. And yes, and that e that's even with Cardacious and G. Because I'll tell you what, those two guards are really good. Those two guards are really good. It just comes down to that interior for Rochester Adams. And whoever the new coach is going to be, you know, that is the other question for Rochester Adams is, you know, okay, you're going to set your foundation, obviously, on G and Cardasis. Now you're going to have to, now you're going to have to say, okay, we got talent in the program. We got program strength, you know. So whoever takes over this job at Rochester Adams, you know, they're going to have their hands full. You know, obviously the big question is, will I have Brady pre-scoring? That is the big question for Rochester Adams is going to be, is pre-scoring's decision could impact this team. And that is, and whoever the new coach is, you know, is going to have to face that decision. And because we don't know where Brady pre-scoring is going to be. We don't know. That is the big question. Uh, but you do have some proven players in Cardasis and G. You have, they're both proven three-point shooters. They can beat you anywhere on the floor. And you're going to have, and those two guys, you know, they feed off each other very well. So that's the big question that I have with Rochester Adams is going to be, is do they, is 
you know, you have the foundation set. You had the foundation pieces there. I mean, now you got to look at, obviously, is does Adams, does Adams, you know, do they become, you know, I'm very curious to see how Adams does his offseason and what the direction to go with their new coach. That is the big question with Rochester Adams. Is where do they go? I mean, are they going to be, are they going to be, you know what I mean? The question is, will this new, I mean, like, will they go in-house with the hire? If it were me personally, if I was as an athletic director, um, I know I'm very well, great guy, by the way. Um, I would look in-house because obviously, you know, if you look at the way the program is set up, you know, the way it's set up, and you really don't need to go outside the box and grab a guy who can at least, like, you know, change the whole culture and identity around. I think Thomas has clearly built that program and culture and identity. I think it's clear. Um, but the question I have for Rochester Rams going to be is, you know, where are they going to go with their hire? Where are they going to go? That is the big question. Um, so we'll see what happens. But... You know, when you look at the future Rochester Adams basketball next year for boys' side, um, Cardacious and G are your two foundation pieces. I mean, they're going to be very competitive in the red next year. They're going to be very competitive. Um, I know a couple teams went up from the white to the red. Um, West Bloomfield and Groves are both up in the red. Um, so I'm very curious to see how those two teams interact in the red, um, how they handle life in that division. When you look at, of course, um, a Rochester Adams, you know, who's been, who's had that experience being in the division. You look at, of course, Clarkston. I think Clarkston's going to be better next year, um, considering, yeah, even though they do lose a couple pieces, but you still have John Call coming back. Um, you still have... Um, you still have Cozen coming back. That's if he doesn't go to a D1 college for football. I mean, that's the big question. I mean, Clarkson has the same question that Adams does. I mean, that is the big question for Clarkson is, does Cozen stay? Or does he go next winter? That's the big question for, um, for Clarkson. Oak Park should be better next year. They have a lot of their players coming back, but the bottom line for Oak Park is their biggest problem is not in the league. It's the it's UAD Jesuits, Oak Park's biggest problem. The last three years, they've lost to the Cubs. They lost to Pat Donnelly. So Oak Park's got to figure a way to get by their Cub problem. That's the bottom line there. Ferndale, they lose a lot of talent. They lost a lot of talent from their D2 state championship team. So, but you know Juan Rickman. You know he'll find a way. He always does. So I'm very curious to see what Ferndale does next year. If they get any transfers to go over there to Ferndale. I mean, a lot of questions over there surrounding the Eagles. Um, and then, of course, there's North Farmington. Of course, North Farmington, a lot of people looked at the Raiders and said, okay, um... They were going to be the team to beat, you know. But I still can't believe how they lost to Orchard Lake St. Mary's. You know, I thought questionable fishing was made in that game. But bottom line is, when you look at the Red next year, I think the division's wide open. And whoever the new coach is at Adams will have a golden opportunity ahead of them to really set their mark, make some noise, over at Rochester Adams. I, I think that's the bottom line. Is, you know, for Adams is, there's a good chance for this team to do some significant damage, to make some noise that they could do very well, make some noise. And I think bottom line is that this team, I think Adams could be a scary team next year, even if they don't have pre score or not. I mean, like, I mean, because Gene Cardacious makes up and they do have a solid program strength coming up, you know, from the JV. But, you know, usually JV at times doesn't always translate to varsity. 
It doesn't always translate that way. And that's going to be the challenge for the new coach over at Adams is can they mesh? You know, can they mesh? You know, because usually when you look at when you look at coach, when you look at years with coaching, usually the second year is usually the most important year because that's the big transition leap year because that's going to be the big part of it for Rochester Adams going forward. So I'm very curious to see what the Highlanders do um, with their coaching search. Um, really curious to see where they go. And I think it'll be very interesting to see what happens with them. I mean, bottom line is, you know, what Adams is going to be is, can they find the right guy? Or it's the right guy there? That's the big question going forward for Rochester Adams. So, a lot to look at with the Highlanders going forward. Um, obviously, when you look at the Highlanders there. Um, let's look at spring sports. Obviously, of course, um, soccer. I still think Rochester's still the cream of the crop of the division um, of the red. Um, Athens has been a team where people have been a lot talking about. Um, Adams has been looking very good. They're winning against Boompia Hills the other night. Stony Creek's had some moments that look good. Um, I think the Red's going to come down to those four teams. But let's not forget, I mean, last year, Bloomfield Hills was near the bottom of the division, yet they won the Division One state title. Um, so, you know, so anybody in that division has a great chance to go far, have a deep run in the playoffs. I mean, obviously, the Kiss of Death District, I think, is over at Utica, but... But still, I mean, like, bottom line is, you look at that division, you look at the teams that are in there, um, proven winners like Rochester, at Rochester, obviously. I think if there's a team that you should bet on, if you're like a Vegas team, um, going to Vegas at all, a team I'll bet on for sure is Rochester. Because I think Rochester's got a great chance, I think, to win the state title this year. I mean, with the talent they got. Um, but like I said, they can be beat in districts. You know what I mean? It may be, be on any given day. The White's interesting because Oxford's a player in that division now. Seaholm Groves has been a player. Um, Lake Orion's been, I mean, like Lake Orion and Oxford really, you know, Lake Orion had that tough loss to Oxford. Um, I think it's going to come down to is, you know, Oxford, I think it's going to come down to you know, I think it'll be very interesting to see how this pans out. I mean, really curious to see how things work out in this division. Really curious. The blue, West Blue has got it all locked up. Um, so, you know, so really when you look at the division right now, um, Avondale, of course, is second. They're going to, I think they're going to finish second. Maybe Ferndale's a player in that. Um, actually, Ferndale and Avondale right now, I think they're going to battle for second place. West Bluefield right now has got that division locked up. Um, could they be a player come postseason time? That's a big question. We got to find out. Um, obviously when you look at, um, when you look at, um, you know, with, with, um, girls soccer, um, I mean, but I still think in the, the cream of the crop of the division right now, that division is going to be, um, Rochester's division. I think that's their division to lose. So we'll see how that one goes in that one. Um, Let's go to some baseball. Um, when I look at baseball, I still think, you know, you got Adams, you got West Bluefield, Lake Orion's another one. Um, I still think those are the three top teams in the um in the um OA this year. Um, yes, you got at Troy Athens, you got Abendale, you got Troy, um, that are gonna make some noise, I think. Um But when I look at the state rankings, and I think the state rankings are going to be very interesting to see. Um, I think when you look at, when you look at those three teams, and you look at, of course, um, Lake Orion, Rochester Adams, and, um, and West Bloomfield, um, you really got to look at, of course, um, you really got to look at, obviously, um, you know, you have to look at, I mean, like, um, you know, obviously, you look at, of course, Orchard Lake St. Mary's, the team to beat in that division. And I'm looking at the state rankings right now in Division One. Um, West Bluefield ranked eighth, Rochester Adams nine. Um, really surprised Lake Orion's not on the top 20. I mean, just going like, wait a minute here, where's Lake Orion on this list? I mean, like, 
I mean, yeah, I mean, like, you look at that district with Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, West Bloom, and Lake Orion, those three teams in, in one district, that's really brutal. Um, But I think it won't be too fu too long before the Dragons get ranked um in this district. I mean, get ranked in the state. I mean, they're that good. I mean, bottom line is, you know, you really look at it. Of course, these are the rankings from the 17th. Of course, we've had a week um when you look at the rankings, but West Bloomby, we know is very good. Rochester Adams, very good. Um, so that's something to really watch for going forward there. Um, let's go to some let's go to Sapa. I mean, like obviously Sapa. Um, of course, this was they haven't released their rankings yet. Um, but you know, you look at clearly, um, you know, I think Adams is a sleeper in this in in this Stony Creek has been mentioned as a possible sleeper. Lake Orion, we know what they got. But I still think Clarkston for some reason. And I think a lot of that's Kira Tomey. Because when you look at Clarkston, I think the Wolves could be a team that they're going to be really dangerous. And I think Clarkston, you know, and I think a lot of that's Tomey. Because, you know, of what she brings to the field. Of course, she's a Central Michigan commit for softball. Um, and I know... Um, so when I look at the rankings, obviously, of course, they're they're from March seventeenth, which is, which is really interesting because, you know, they haven't released the rankings in about a month. Um, well, on the line is I I think at the end of the day here, when you look at the rankings, um, you know, I mean, like you know, winner, you know, you have to have proven results, and you know, when you look at the OA right now, you know, there's a lot to prove. I mean, obviously, when you look at the rankings, I mean, like, you know, and it's something to keep an eye on for sure. But softball rankings really interesting here. Um, Lake Orion, an honorable mention. Stony Creek is an honorable mention. I think that's going to change. I think I think watch for Clarkson in the, in the rankings. I think they're going to make some noise. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, of course, girls soccer. Of course, they released their rankings. As I mentioned earlier, Rochester's ranked number one in the state. Um, no surprise there. Stony Creek is fourth. Um, no surprise there. Uh, Blue Bay Hills ranked 11th, which is really interesting. Um, considering they just lost to Adams. Um, Troy ranked 13th, which is really odd. Looking at the rankings there. Um, I think, you know, I mean, Athens ranked 7th. I mean, like, you know, I mean, like, I think they got it right. But I just think Blue Bay Hills is ranked a little bit too high. And I think. You know, of course, they played Adams. Um, I where, I wonder where Adams is in, in the rankings, obviously. Um, of course, Northville's number two, Portage Central's third. Um, but I just think when you look at, you know, Rochester being ranked number one in the state in girls' soccer, really no surprise there. Um, Alice Mack, Natalie Race, Ava Williams, um, a lot of the girls' basketball players mentioned for sure, who also played soccer for Coach, um, you know, also played soccer, of course. Um, we know the history that um, a lot of girls soccer players play for, um, play um, girls basketball as well. So, you know, so no surprise, Rochester ranked number one in the state in girls soccer um, right now. Um, track and field, I mean, obviously, I think Adams in the OA is the best team in this division because of, I think they're more balanced, even though people are saying, well, Oak Park, you know, they got balanced too. I mean, like, they don't really have a lot, but they have that they find the quality and quantity. Um, not a lot of OA teams ranked in the top um, 10 for boys track and field. Um, you know, that could change in the girls' side of things. Um, but in the boys' side, obviously, I still think Adams, from a team perspective, I think it's the, it's the team to beat. Um, in track and field, um, on the boys' side, on the girls' side of things, of course, um, you know, of course, no OA representation there. Um, but it, it clearly tells you how much depth the OA has when you look at, of course, the depth that they that the league has. And I think when you look at the depth the league has, um, it clearly, you know, I mean, like anybody can be on any given day. I mean, really, that's what it is. Um. A lot of West Side teams ranked number one in the state. I mean, ranked in the state. Um, East Kentwood top team of girls track, um, boys track, obviously. Um, and then boys track, obviously. Um, 
You know, of course, I think they're ranked number one, two in boys track as well. Um, so that's really interesting there um, to see where all the rankings are right now. Um, let's look at girls golf here, obviously. I'm the top 10 in the state there. Um, well, boys golf, actually, my bad. Um, forgot girls golf is in the fall. Um, but obviously when you look at, um, you know, when you look at boys golf here, um, we got here, we got Adams ranked eight, Clarkson nine. I wonder where Lake Orion's at in this list here. Um, kind of surprised where the Dragons are at. I mean, Rochester's 15th right now. I'm curious to see where Lake Orion's at in this list. Of course, it was updated just recently, just today. Um, and curious to see where, um, you know, wonder where Lake Orion is in this list. Um, Division two, um, really not a lot of representation around the league there. Um, let's go to some tennis now. Of course, we don't talk a lot of tennis, girls tennis here. Um, Troy's ranked number two, Blue Bay Hills number three, Clark's number four in the state. Stony Creek tied for 10th in the state. Um, Division two, Seahawks ranked two in the state, and Groves ranked 11th, 10th in the state. I mean, you look at tennis side of things, I mean, I think this could be Troy's year. I think this could be the Colts' year to do some damage. They could do some special things in tennis. I mean, Blue Bay Hills, you know they're going to be tough. I mean, Ann Arbor Pioneer, they're, they're the reason why they're one of the top teams in the state. Um, so, when you look at it, so when you look at it here, I mean, like, I still think when you look at tennis, um, you know, Troy, Bloomby Hills, Clarkston, they're going to be players. Stoney could be a player as well. Um, Division two, Seaholm, they get by Grand Rapids, Forest Hills, Northern. I think they could be a serious contender. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens there in um, tennis. Um, let's go to lacrosse. Um, obviously, um, obviously, when you look at lacrosse, I mean, like, everything starts and ends. Um, you know, when you look at, Hmm, it looks like you don't have the lacrosse rankings up yet, so that's really interesting to see. Um, but bottom line is, um, you clearly look at in lacrosse, obviously, boys' side of things. You know, you got Lake Ori in there, Coach Ron Herbert, Clarkson's going to be there. Um, you got Birmingham United, they're a solid program, always have been. Um, you know, but definitely when you look at lacrosse, you always got to start thinking Lake Orion and Clarkson. Those are the two top teams there, I think, in lacrosse. Um, Stony Creek is a wild card in this, but it's kind of hard for me to believe and trust in Stony Creek. So that's something to really watch for going forward there with the Cougars. Um, on the girls' side of things, um, obviously Birmingham and United and Bloomby Hills are the two teams that really stand out. Um... I think, you know, but Lake Orion could be a player now in lacrosse, especially the way they've been playing the last few weeks. Um, so there's a lot to really look at when you look at lacrosse. Um, but bottom line is, you know, when you look at it as a whole in the state, the Catholic League, you know, is going to be tough. Birmingham Brother Rice, Nobody, Detroit, Catholic Central, two top teams in um, Division One, And then you look at a course in Division um, And then, of course, you look at a course... um. You know, when you look at Lake Orion and Clarkston, those two teams I think are going to be really interesting to watch. Stony Creek's a wild card, but it's kind of hard for me to trust the Cougars right now going forward when you look at Stony Creek. Um, so those are my take right now on all the spring sports right now. Um, let me see if I'm missing a, a sport here. Um, let's see if they got rankings. Um, water polo, I don't think they do. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see how, um, how things go going forward. Um, when you look at the spring sports season, um, so a lot to look at. I mean, when you look at the spring sports, everything going on right now, um, football, we've already mentioned that course, the, um, a lot, every coach has been filled. The vacancies have been filled. Um, we talked, um, Pontiac and Avondale last week on the podcast. Um, you know, we talked about them. Um, and then of course you, you look at, of course, now you can start focusing on summer stuff and, 
you know, he's still got spring sports still to go. We still haven't got the postseason yet, of course, but we're getting there. We're getting really close. We're hanging the month of May. And you know when May comes, you know, that's when um everything really starts to get serious. And, you know, and then, of course, when June comes, postseason stuff comes. And then July, you know what I mean? You have that um, you have that full month off, you know what I mean? Or full month off to get ready for football. And then in August, you start football season. So a lot to look at if you're a student athlete going forward. Um, so a lot to look at going forward. So when you look at, obviously, um, some teams to really watch for, I think, in the next few weeks. Um, soccer, watch for Rochester. I think they're going to make some noise. Um, I think they're a team to watch track and field boys side. Watch, um, watch Rochester Adams girls. Here's how Oak Park does because Oak Park, we know has been one of the top teams in track all year. Um, we know they got athletes. Um, we know that, um, so that's something to really watch for there. Lacrosse, I think it's Clarkston to really watch for there. I think they can make some noise. Um, I think, you know, when you look at, I think Lake Orion Clarkson for lacrosse, that's going to be really interesting to see how that goes. Um, and then girls lacrosse, I think Lake Orion's to watch and girls lacrosse. I think they're going to be a team to watch for, for sure there. Um, so, and then, in the baseball, obviously team I'm watching is, um, team I'm watching in baseball. I'm keeping a very close eye on Rochester Adams. See how they do going forward. Softball is definitely Clarkston because curious to see can Clarkston compete with the upper echelon with Kira Tomey. Um, but another team I'm watching is Troy. I mean, I think Troy had a nice win against Oxford the other night. Um, they were competitive against Rochester Adams. Um, Boopy Hill's another team I'm keeping an eye on for for um, softball. I mean, they can hit, but if they run in with a very good pitcher for Coach Dan Whitemeyer's team, they're going to have some problems. I mean... Booby Hills can hit, but if you have, they run them a very good pitcher, they got some problems going forward. So we'll see what happens going forward. So, all right, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Also, keep an eye on everything going around the league this week. Keep an eye on the basketball vacancies, um, obviously. So, a lot of basketball vacancies to talk about for sure. Um, all right, I'm going to sign off here. Um, take care. God bless, and I'll see you all next week, everybody. Take care and see you next week, and God bless everybody. God bless all.